Hi and welcome to another mini lecture on pre-calculus. Uh, topic today is finding the final amount in a word problem on continuous compound interest. So here the issue uh, in one case of it is that you deposit a certain amount of money in a bank in a so-called certificate of deposit that has a fixed uh, rate of interest. The interest is going to be calculated by the method of continuous compounding. So this is a critical phrase here. And we want to find out how much is going to be on the account at the end of a certain period. So there are certain uh, numbers involved in this type of problems. Uh, something called interest rate, typically shown by R. Uh, you write it in decimal, so 4.5% is going to be 0 0.045. Uh, there is a certain amount that is deposited uh, or borrowed or something at the very beginning, and that's called the principal. So principal here is $3,400. And it is left on account for a certain number of years, in this case, 5 years. So T is 5 and we want to find out uh, how much will be in the account at that time. That is uh, sometimes shown by the letter A for the amount on the account at the end of the period. So this amount uh, is calculated by principal 3400 times exponential of R times T. That is provided that we are doing continuous compounding. So this is significant. Continue, uh, compounded continuously. We had previously calculated this uh, uh, in there were uh, different styles there depending on the terms of, of the contract. So if it is compounded monthly or daily or uh, seasonally or yearly that's one style and this is a different style so at this point let's just go ahead and do the calculation uh, so again the significant fact here is that we are using continuous compounding so all that we have to do is to put these quantities into our calculator all of these problems are going to offer you uh, a calculator and so you have to calculate like 3400 times exponential of uh, r is 0.045 uh, times the number of years which is 5. Uh, these problems as you do them uh, the program tells you do not round any intermediate computations meaning if you take this and somehow round it or you calculate this one and then somehow round it and then you do the final calculation those roundings at each stage you're kind of shaving off a little bit and the, the final answer could be slightly off and this is asking you the answer to the nearest cent so what you want to do is to do the calculations all on in a single go so for example if we are uh, excuse me. if we are on this calculator and we want to do this problem let's uh, imagine there's this different set of numbers but it's all the same this is 2600 is the principal amount so 2000 600 times uh, times exponential of and ours is 2% point or 2 in this problem is 2% remember converted to decimal and the number of years on the account is uh, 5 years so here We are doing uh, times 5. 
So you notice that everything is written in a single formula and the calculator calculates everything to the maximum number of digits it has in its own memory, typically 16 digits. And then uh, you calculate the final amount and then you want to, cal uh, to round it to the nearest cent. In this case, it's going to be 44 and there wouldn't be any issue with <coughs> respect to uh, intermediate rounding. We do intermediate rounding if this was uh, slightly uh, sensitive problem it could be different the two answers could be off by a couple of cents and then uh, the computer is going to grade you incorrect by noticing the difference in the last digits of this so just uh, enter everything in a single line and you'll be all okay so uh, in terms of wording, uh, sometimes you are borrowing money, sometimes you are investing money, uh, so you want to look at uh, various problems to see how the language is expressed, but uh, the formula in all of these cases is the same formula, which is P times exponential of RT. Now, uh, we had uh, done calculation of uh, similar problems before and just to explain what is the connection between the two of them I'm going to go off on a tangent here to compare this thing to a lecture we had before and uh, see how the formulas relate to each other so this is an optional lecture now uh, previously we had uh, talked about the yearly compounding So yearly compounding, that's when you put your money into your account and it gives you an interest uh, for an entire year. At the end of the year, it deposits that interest into your account. And for the next year, your original principal and the earning in interest you had for the first year are going to be all considered as your money and then you earn interest on all of that essentially you end up in earning interest on top of the interest you had earned first year the formula for that was uh, the amount to your account is the principal times one plus the interest rate raised to power of t then you can uh, when the banks compete with each other and they want to distinguish their product then somebody might come and say well I will give you semi-annual compounding so semi-annual uh, compounding it means the bank gives you half of your interest in the first six months and let you earn interest on interest on the second six months that's going to earn you slightly more interest so the banks can compete on that respect and say they are giving you a better product the formula in that case is going to be principal half of the interest per compounding period now if every six months you are going to compound your uh, money you are going to have twice as many compounding as you had here so your exponent becomes 2t so for example if there are 10 years during which you are earning your interest the number of semi-annual periods in the 10 years is going to be 20 so your money is going to be compounded 20 times and so on uh, and then playing around with this game somebody might come and uh, give a quarterly compounding sometimes uh, referred to as a seasonal uh, compounding that simply means your money is going to be counted, compounded four times every year. So you get the principal one plus a quarter of the interest is going to be deposited in your into your account. But the, on the other hand, the number of compounding is going to be increased by that much. Again, if you are keeping your money into account is for ten years. The number of seasons in 10 years is going to be 40 so it's going to be 4t in general 
somebody is going to come up with a better product. In that case, it says I will do monthly compounding. Monthly compounding will be uh, P times 1 plus R over 12 uh, over to the power of 12T. If somebody wants to go beyond that, he might say daily compounding. Daily compounding formula is going to be A is equal to P times 1 plus 1 over 365 fifth of the interest is going to be deposited every day but then you're going to have that many more compounding okay mathematicians take this uh, issue to to the limit this is okay instead of daily but if we do it hourly or every minute or every second and so on what does that do it increases this denominator and this exponent. So if I have n number of compounding per year, the formula is going to be p times 1 plus r divided by n to power of nt. So n could be 1, 2, 4, 12, 365, or if you want to do it every second, well, the n is going to be about 30 million because there are 30 million seconds in every year and so on. So, as a mathematician, we take this to the limit. We say, what if you have continuous compounding? Continuous compounding. It's letting n going to infinity. And this is something that you're going to learn in calculus that certain magic happens as, as, as you take the limit. Uh, this formula simplifies considerably and all you get is exponential of RT. This whole thing simplifies to exponential of RT. And this is actually uh, one of the justifications of the number E and one of the entrances of E into the world of mathematics is just calculating the interest. Now, to show you this uh, in a software, let's go ahead and explain to you in on decimals. So, here I have my principal is just one dollar to make the problem simple. So, we compare a variety of methods of calculation for what happens to one dollar. Here on my uh, on my graph, uh, on the horizontal axis, I have time. So time is here, so two years, four years, six years, and so on. On the vertical axis, I have the amount on the account. This is going to be A. So at the beginning, we're just putting $1 into account. After one year, we are going to have a certain amount of money. The interest, uh, we can adjust the interest to any number, uh, it doesn't matter, it's just whatever that interest might happen to be. So n equal to 1 is the annual compounding, n equal to 2, semi-annual, no name for 3, but 4 compounding for per year is a seasonal compounding, you notice that as I go up, the amount increases, uh, the curve becomes steeper. If I do 12 compounding, the monthly compounding, that is going to be uh, a lot more steep than uh, this one. You know, as I go, now do this really quickly, you see that the curve becomes steeper. Okay, let's do it one more time. As we do more compounding, remember this was the amount on the account. You can of course change your interest, uh, different higher interest is going to give you more, lower interest is going to give you less. And what we are uh, uh, saying in, in the previous page is that as n increases, we approach a certain curve. Let's go and show you this process again. So exponential of RT is a continuous compounding. Uh, that means n has gone to infinity. So in this case, the blue 
is the purple is the regular compounding and the red is the continuous compounding. As I increase the number of compounding per year, you see that the purple approaches the red. Let's see. You see. As I increase the number of compounding, I come to the maximum which is the red. So the red is giving us the maximum interest in that is the case of continuous compounding. Another advantage of continuous compounding is the formula is very clean and we don't get bogged down with the issues of the calendar. If you want to see what's the difference between continuous and regular compounding, this curve is having a very hard time showing you the difference. The gap between these two is hard to see because they are looking almost the same. So when I have fewer compounding, you can see the gap is very clear and very large. But as I go higher, there is still a gap, just that you cannot see it. Here's the gap. Take the two formulas and subtract them. So this green function shows us the difference between these two. And let's see again. In case of one, the gap is, uh, you see, is high. As I increase the number of compounding, the green comes down, and that shows that the gap becoming less. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, you are going to see this issue in much more detail in your calculus class, in calculus one. Uh, so. This is one of the introductions of the number e and the exponential function. And uh, however, for the sake of the problems in this section, uh, all you need is the formula we mentioned at the beginning, that the amount is the principal times exponential of RT. Okay, until next lecture, uh, good luck. And